Jesus love.
Good morning. Now it's on. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Let's just bow our heads for prayer. Father God, we thank you because you are wonderful. Wonderful counselor, our strength, and you're here at the time that we most need. Lord, thank you so much that every time we call upon your name, you come. As we gather together here in this special day, Lord, we ask your presence and that you lead this program, Lord. We so ask that everyone that is participating and that everyone that there, far away, but they're still so close to us, they receive your peace. And that your word, Lord, becomes true in our lives. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Welcome to the Central London Church. So we are going to go through the Sabbath school. But it's not your usual Sabbath school today because we prepared something special for you. And do you know why we prepared something special? Because you guys are special. We know that the Bible says that we were made wonderfully. And then Jesus came for us and really shows how special we are. So we hope that today you receive the power, you receive the knowledge and wisdom, and then you receive that presence that we just prayed and called up his name. So without further ado, we've been through this journey of the rest in Christ. And I was thinking like, you know, which one is my favorite? <laughs> I'm be having some problem because I love all of them. Because all of them are so exciting, you learn so much. And every, each week we go, we just find ourselves in a place that probably touch more than the others. So, today is a special day. So which means this, uh, the lessons we've been really learning, and we're here to share with each other, remember that. I always believe that when we come together, even though we cannot speak, but something happens in the spirit, and I hope from here you'll be able to share. Remember that the word, it makes effect also when we share. So rest in Christ it is an amazing theme, I think, and I hope you think it too. I was thinking, you know, after this coronavirus and so many things really happens and, you know, we lost loved ones. Right now, there are people in the hospitals and probably some of you really were in, a way in the hospital or so. I know a good friend of mine who was in the hospital for a month and we almost lost him. And how wonderful it is that we have these lessons that give us the wisdom to know how we can have hope, even in a time like this. And I was just thinking, you know, the time like this, and such a word and power that we have in our hands, how great that will be if we will share. And here, we're going to have special people. We're going to have a panel. Can you see all the chairs here? <laughs> so we prepared actually several people. I think the seven people will be here, and then they will share that word with the power with us. So with further ado, I will call the present team for the first song. Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath. Okay, there are much more, there are many of you here today, so I really expect a much more OT. Happy Sabbath. So I'll say that again. Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath. 
Wonderful. This, for this um, section, we're going to be singing two hymns. We're going to be singing Come Thou Fount of Heavenly Blessing to begin with. And we're going to invite you to join us. Okay, we're going to sing together. The first stanza, we're going to all sing together. The second stanza, we're going to ask the ladies in the house to sing that hymn. Yes, and then the, the last stanza, uh, oh, as a matter of fact, the second stanza will have the ladies singing the first two lines, followed by the gentlemen singing the following two lines, and so forth. Okay, so we'll mix the second stanza, and then we'll all sing the last stanza again. Is that clear? Yes? Okay, let's have a go. Come the fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy praise. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me ever. Teach me ever. voices up we're going to sing hymn 183 I will sing of Jesus love
you for your wonderful singing. And blessed Sabbath. I'm really sorry. I'm getting there. I <laughs> just wanted to say, praise the Lord. One on amazing voices. And then we are blessed, do you know? With this special day in a special voice, it's amazing. Right, it's just, just a little announcement. Uh, for those of you who like to use the toilet, can you just go on my right side? So just go through this door, down the stairs, and then you're going to go to the right. So there are the toilets. Now we have actually the Sabbath school, free to rest. I'm not going to say much because we have a panel of, uh, of amazing friends and family, which they will share actually some of their experience of the Sabbath school. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Man, that sounds really, really weak. I, I, I'm assuming you must have had a tough week. It's okay, it's good, it's okay. Yeah, well, uh, hopefully you'll feel free to rest today. But we still want to feel some energy about this fabulous subject you've got. Hello, everybody. All right, okay, good. You're welcome to Solo for exactly my first time. So, um, yeah, if I get some things wrong, please excuse me. But... Um, but anyway, this week's lesson, a fabulous lesson, free to work. Who studied this week's lesson first? Actually, no, don't put your hand up. I don't want to embarrass anybody. Hopefully you studied this week's lesson, okay? The memory text says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Yeah, we're going to have a, some discussion on two stories, okay? But just let those words sink in, okay, that, that we have from the Psalms here. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Okay, good morning. Okay, good morning, everybody. Our lesson study this week, we're looking at two main stories. The story of the paralytic man and the story of Elijah, when he became discouraged. So I'd like to first start by asking you a question this morning. So if you first would like to introduce your names, that might help if we just introduce your names to everybody. So just to say that um, my name is Annette Ruth Pearson and I go to the Oasis Community Church. My name is Marvin. I attend Battersea Seventh Day Adventist Church. My name is Josh. I attend Balham Seventh Day Adventist Church. 
Good morning and happy Sabbath. I am Rebecca Marshall and I attend Hackney Church. Hello everyone, I'm Felicia from Central London Church, the host church for this event. And my name's Arnold Best, I'm from Milton Keynes um, SDA Church. Okay, so the first um, question I'd like to ask is the first story is about the paralytic man. And we know that the paralytic man wasn't able to walk and he had to rely on his friends to get him to Jesus. How do you cope when you are going through challenging times? Do you have friends around you to support you? That's the first question. I'll take, I'll take the first question. Um, so yeah, I think, I think like the paralytic, he wouldn't have been able to get to Jesus if it wasn't for his friends. And I think it's really important as, as Christians that we have spiritual friends around us as well so that when we're going through situations that they can advise us and give us the right advice. Because if we're, if we're getting advice from, from all sorts of friends, we may not get the advice that we need. Um, so like the paralytic, I think it's, it's important to have spiritual friends. Okay, anyone else like to answer that question? On the subject of friends uh, bringing this paralytic man to Jesus, I think another lesson we can take from this is that we can find comfort in helping others find Jesus. So it does help whenever, you know, um, we need encouragement to reach out to our friends and share the good news with them. That's also therapeutic for us. It helps us. It not only helps them, but it helps us. And I think it's, it's such a powerful thing, thing to think about the fact that we can help others find salvation in Jesus, and we also benefit from that. It also helps us. Um, and what I heard, I heard the speaker say that there are four men who bring the paralytic to Jesus. Now four, the number four, has a special significance in the Bible. It's the symbol for universality. And if we think about it, the gospel is universal. And there are four Gospels in the Bible, the Gospel after Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And if we share that good news with our friends, not only will our friends benefit from it, but we too will find great encouragement and comfort in that. Amen. Just, just to add very quickly to that, I, <laughs> I also think that um, it's important to share our experiences because if we don't share our experiences as friends, then we're never going to learn and grow from each other. So I think that's important as well. Can I just add, I like the fact that even though he was a broken man, his friends still stuck around. Because a lot of times when things go wrong, that's when friends disappear. But like, even when he was at his worst, you know, because he would have been rejected by society as well, there were people who still stood by him. Now, when we read the lesson story, it says that this man was sick because of actions he did himself. So he wasn't sick, like, you know, some people get sick because of the environment or get sick for something external. So this man got sick because of things he did himself. So when we are around people and they are sick or in their position because of things they've done themselves, how do we treat them? Right? How do we treat people when they're sick because of things they've done themselves? Um, so you see... <coughs> We, we look at the physical because unfortunately we are unable to see the inside and what is going on on the inside. So we see what is going on on the outside. And the, the quickest thing for us to do is to fix it with medication, for example. So somebody um, is ill, um, going through a depression, for example. Um, Within the Seventh-day Adventist Church, um, I mean, and this is something I have observed. Now, prayer is very good, extremely important, but somebody is going through a depression, and they will need help. What's causing the depression? Because remember, with the paralytic um, man, Jesus, um, Jesus didn't heal the symptoms because the fact that he was paralytic was only a symptom. There was something else going on. So Jesus knew that he needed to be liberated from the guilt um, that was causing the illness. And even the scribes around him were, were shocked. I'm, and I'm thinking, why are you shocked? Do you not know who God is? Do you know that God will go to the root of things to root it out and, and so on? So, for example, if, if somebody is depressed and they're taking medication, now one of the side effects of 
antidepressants is depression. So the, the, after six hours or so on, the depression comes back. What is the cause? What, what is causing this depression? And that is what we need to um, do when we speak with people. Try to get to the bottom of things. If you get rid of the cause or the root cause, then the person can begin healing. Thank you. Anyone else want to add? Yeah, I just want to add. Um, I like the way you, you kind of described it. Obviously, we can kind of segment um, as a society where we've structured um, health, our, our, our perspective and our vision of health. It can be quite segmented as to physical versus um, mental health. Um, but obviously, you talked about uh, ideally what we're looking at is a person as a whole. And I think what we can do very often, uh, talking from my, I can only talk for myself, very often if I'm seeing someone who's sick, seeing someone who's caused themselves this, this sickness, I think very often I can be, um, I can be quite impatient um, on a personal level. I know I was talking about, you know, his friends stuck around. But on a personal level, often it's a matter of, well, you know, you got yourself in this mess. You know, you've got to get yourself out of it. Do you know what I mean? Um, almost kind of, you know, um, it's because it's, it's, it's self-inflicted. D deal with your own problems, you know, sort it out. That's just me on a personal level. And I think very often what we can do is um, overlook the things that have contributed to that. What steps were there in that, um, in that process of getting to a point where they were sick? Whether that's, for example, um, I know very many of my friends um, that I used to speak to got themselves sick from, from alcohol induced sicknesses, drug-related illnesses. Um, that I never necessarily saw my part in participating in that. You know, where did I step up to say stop? Where did I step up to, to offer that support, to lend a helping hand, to offer an encouraging word? And I think very often I can't, I, I, we overlook, for instance, the steps to get to a point where somebody becomes sick and ill and very much look at, well, the end point and not the build up. And I think for me, my patients come from looking at and reflecting on, well, what have I done? How can that then reflect on how I treat others mm -hmm. and help others to, to, to well, Put it like this, I want to be the fence at the top of the hill rather than the ambulance at the bottom of it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's, my, that's my piece. Um, right, so I, I agree with, with what everyone has said. Um, I think that when it comes to your question, Ruth, how do we look upon people who suffer from different physical ailments and, and diseases? You know, the first reaction is to think, oh, what did they do in their lives to cause that disease? Mm -hmm. um, and we all, well, almost all of us tend to, to do that. Um, and even ourselves, when we suffer from disease, we try to go back and think, oh, what have I done wrong? You know, could, I, could have I had a better, healthier lifestyle? to prevent this. And it has a lot to do with the physical symptoms, right? Whereas in this case, as Ruth said, um, this person also had the sinful um, lifestyle. It wasn't just probably his diet or whatever, but things he did which affected his spiritual health, bad choices in life, generally speaking. And that's why Jesus, the first thing Jesus says to this man is not take up your bed and walk. He says to him, son, your sins are forgiven you. And he actually says in Matthew uh, chapter 9, verse 2, in Matthew chapter 9, we find the, the same story. In, in that chapter, he actually says to him, son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. So um, as, as Marv uh, was saying earlier, Jesus addresses the root cause uh, of, of his problem. And his problem was spiritual uh, restlessness in addition to physical disease or, or disease, as in physical ailment. Mm -hmm. And Jesus addresses whatever bothered him the most. And that's why he starts with, your sins are forgiven you. Mm -hmm. And that's why having the peace of forgiveness can be more important than physical healing. So being saved is more important than being saved from your physical disease and situation. That's why, for instance, I have friends and, and my uncle um, is going through a tough time at the moment. He suffers from, from cancer. Um, and it's very difficult. We all pray for his healing. It's the no natural, normal reaction to have. We pray for the healing of our friends and family. Mm -hmm. But more importantly than that is their salvation. Um, and their connection with the Lord, the forgiveness they receive from the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why I think Jesus, through this example, highlights the importance of addressing forgiveness of sins and reconciliation with him. And once that is sorted, you know, once we have peace in our hearts, that will also have an impact on our physical health. That will help us. Um, and so I think this story is very powerful. It does, it does show our priorities. And you know, as a church, we like to share the health message. You know, it's something we take pride in. La Melinda, California, you know, the blue zone uh, with the people having the longest lifespan um, in the world. We take pride in that. We have a healthy lifestyle, generally speaking. But it's not only about the health message. What's the point of sharing the health message if we don't share Christ with others? So it's important to combine the, the, the sharing of the health message with, with the spiritual message, which, with the gospel, which is good news. And that's why Jesus could say to the paralytic, son, be of good cheer. The gospel, Christ's forgiveness, is good news for everyone. Can I, can I just add, and I, I think sometimes uh, some of those points in themselves make it difficult for us to deal with some of the issues. Mm -hmm. So if, if I'm a, a Seventh-day Adventist Christian, what happens if I get sick? Mm -hmm. You know, we've got a health message, you know, well, why are you getting all of these things? Mm -hmm. And I think it can really weigh heavily on us when the cause of our illness has actually been caused by ourselves. Okay, it's me who's lived this lifestyle, haven't looked after myself, here I am now with all of these ailments and I know the cause is because of me. And, and, and to me, it's how do we look at people who've fallen, you know, through that, you know, um, you know, we always nod our head when the drunk falls over and, you know, um, you know smashes up his face, almost like, well, <laughs> what else did you expect? But I think here, Jesus is cutting through all of that and just saying that and showing us that we have to have a heart, even for the people who've messed up and caused it themselves, we must still be reaching out to them. Mm. I'd like to um, bring this even closer to us as individuals. So we know in terms of this paralytic man that he went through life and made choices in his life that allowed him now to be facing Jesus. You don't need to share the background, but think of times in our lives. Are there things that we have done in our lives that if we were to go and face Jesus, that we would want him to say to us first, not pick up our bed and walk, but we would want that forgiveness and healing from him. And do we think that that inner healing is what's more important than the physical healing? So which one do you think is more important and why? the inner healing that the paralytic got from Jesus when Jesus spoke to him and said, son, you know, this is where you are. Do you want God to call you son or daughter first and heal that inner part first before healing the external? So which is more important to you? Okay. Um, it's, a, it's a tricky question, I'll be honest. I'm not going to sit here and lie and say, actually, um, I want inner healing and, and not physical healing. You want both. Um, but it is crucial to know that you can have peace within and still be physically um, injured um, or have a disability. And I think sometimes those, for example, if you've met somebody who's maybe struggling with a situation where they've been praying for healing and they haven't got that healing, but they have that inner peace, that sometimes is even a testimony to you to know that, wow, this person has this physical illness, but actually they've got inner peace and I'm, I apparently I'm whole and, and I'm not happy. So sometimes God could use us as an example and a testimony for others as well. But ultimately, ultimately, the inner peace is, is what you want. Because I could be physically healed but be sad and depressed. What benefit is that? I'll lay in my bed all day with, my, with all my abilities. So you want, you want that physical healing. I mean, and it, it goes even on a practical sense. I remember a few years ago, I met a 17-year-old, uh, um, can I say a boy? Yes, yeah, still a child. 17-year-old um, young man, rather, um, on the road randomly. He had just come from an interview, and the interview was unsuccessful. Now, I was looking at him, and in my head I'm thinking, okay, could it be the way you were dressed? 
But I'm, I'm just thinking this, because you see the person, you can see with your eyes, so you start to think, because you know they have a rule on how you dress when you come for an interview and so on. But I didn't mention that to him. But um, he needed money to go back home and so on. So I started having a conversation with him. So I said, have you got a, a, a CV? He said, yes. I looked at it. It wasn't a CV. I just, I don't know what that was, but it wasn't a CV. Um, so there are other things that needed to be in place before he got the job. Now, if I had given him the money to go home, it would have taken him home, but he would have gone for an interview the next day in the same situation that he's in, and he will be rejected and rejected and rejected. So I arranged to meet up with him again. I said, okay, I will help you to do your CV. I'll coach you and uh, interview how to how to behave when you go for an interview and so on. And I did that, and in a matter of weeks, he had a job. And I kept in contact with him and so on. And now he's doing very well. So he, as well as spiritual, all of the, this, this lesson is very practical. And, and it's, it's every day. We meet people every day, and we see sick people every day. What's causing you to um, be ill all the time? What's causing this headache all the time? And even with my students at school, um, I have one particular student who every single day, he, every single week, he forgets his PE kit. And he keeps getting detention. And I'm saying to the teachers, why do you give him detention for the same thing all the time? They said, well, he, he's always forgetting his PE kit. Okay, do you think he deliberately said, just forget the PE kit? Something else is going on. So I had to have a conversation, conversation with the child and think of ways which it can help him to remember to bring the PE kit. He loves PE, but he just can't remember to bring the PE kit. There are other things, there are underlying issues that people are going through. Mm -hmm. So listen and try to write. So what could be the reason for this? And let's deal with the root cause. Um, I just going to quickly say that if we look at Jesus' example, um, he healed more than he preached. Um, so he addressed the immediate needs of the crowds. He also fed them. But I think Jesus knew that given that many of them did not enjoy physical health, they could also not fully grasp the message he was preaching. Sometimes when we are sick, I think we find it difficult to concentrate and we cannot even, you know, focus. And so I think that there is a strong connection between power of focus, which is related to also inner peace, you know, we, when we are connected with God, we have that inner peace and, and uh, physical healing. And that's why Jesus, as the great physician, healed many in the crowd. Um, however, um, the test comes when we lack that physical health. Are we still able to maintain that strong connection with God and have that inner peace which only he can provide? And I would like to think that when our relationship with God is so strong, we will value our inner peace more than physical healing. And why, why am I saying that? If we look at Hezekiah, the king, I think we all know the story. He prayed that God would extend his life. And what did God do? He did extend his life. Mm. However, we know that when the ambassadors of Babylon came to visit Hezekiah, when the test came, Hezekiah failed that test because instead of glorifying God and praising God, he boasted about his own achievements and forgot about God. So in that case, the extension of his life was not for his salvation. If he had accepted God's will for him to die when the original time was appointed for him to die, Hezekiah would not have disappointed God to that extent by failing the test of faith, and his own nation would not have fallen victims to the Babylonians later on. So that's why whenever we go through moments of... Um, distress in the sense that our physical health is not in order. We have to pray that God's will be done because he knows when we're ready, you know, to go to rest in him. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have to accept his will. And that's why inner peace 
should be more important than, than physical health or even physical healing in, in the case of, of some who have experienced physical problems. Um, and yes, if Christ is first in our lives, no matter what we're going through, he will give us that peace. We only need to ask him to give us that peace. Okay, so we're going to now move on to the story of Elijah. So we just enter about having that inner peace. Now, in the story of Elijah, we know that Elijah had this big encounter with um, the people there, called down fire from heaven. He told Ahab it wasn't going to rain, and it didn't rain for all this period of time. But now when he's had all of these encounters with God... Now he finds himself feeling really, really depressed, feeling really, really low, wanting to die. When Elijah hit that rock bottom, what did God do? So when Elijah hit the rock bottom, what did God do? Did he scold him and tell him he shouldn't be there, or did he provide for him in a physical way? Rebecca, you want to start that? Yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, God, God definitely saw him, saw what he had done, and, and he, he reached out to him. So, for example, when, when um, Elijah had run off after everything had done, sometimes you look back at, like, I look at Elijah's story and I think, it doesn't make sense, because God had literally just brought down fire, and, and yeah, he had brought down fire, and straight after that, Jezebel had told him that he wants to kill him, she wants to kill him, and, and he ran off, and it's just like, but look at what Jesus has just done for you you put the two together and it, it just doesn't make sense but God knew God understood his character and that's the beauty of God as well is that God understands us in our moments of weakness um to, to other people it may not make sense but but God empathizes with us he, he understands that we're humans um and in that moment he re he reached out to him yeah so um just to kind of follow on from that that ultimately from that message um there's a simple truth that we can take from it is that we we need God um, you know, there's nowhere we can run. We can't outrun God. There's nowhere we can run to, to hide from God. Um, and ultimately, in our times of need, um, no matter how far removed we might feel we are from God, uh, the message that we should take from it is that at those times is when we need God the most, uh, and we should turn to Him the most. And it's very often the most difficult time for us to do that. Um, but Elijah is a great um, example, sorry, of of how 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 limited we are. Um, you know. Like we just mentioned, obviously, kind of he, uh, on Mount Carmel, he, we've seen this mad miracle take place, and ultimately, even somebody with such strong faith has obviously kind of had a, had a moment of weakness or a time of weakness, um, which which is something that I'm sure we can all resonate with. And ultimately, that the message being that, that through Christ, who strengthens us, we can do anything. Um, I think that's a, that's the most important thing. And um, it's just like. Um my friend asked me this week, you know, he said, um, was it a lack of faith? But I suggested um, it wasn't because um, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 10, we realized that he, um, his faith was still strong, mm -hmm. um, but he had been subject to strong pressure, you know, and, and the death decree um, broke him and so on. So he could not think clearly in that situation because um, he needed rest but did not know where and how to find it. And sometimes that is just what it is um, with us. We just, we need that rest. We just don't know where to find it. And there is an important lesson here, you see. So we, and I wrote in my notes, you know, we must not judge those who get mm -hmm. discouraged or depressed. We should encourage them and listen to them. And listening is a skill. Um, and th there are two types of listening or two types of listeners. There are those who listen to react, and there are those who listen to empathize. So when we listen to people, let us listen to empathize, listen to, uh, to try to get an understanding of where you are and the help that you need, and so on. Thank you. Just to, just to add to that very quickly, um, <laughs> as well is that Elijah was running. Elijah was running, and sometimes God just wants us to stop. And when we stop, that's when God is able to intervene in that moment of weakness. Because if Elijah had kept on running um, and he hadn't stopped for a minute, God wouldn't have been able to intervene. So sometimes it's good for us to just stop. And in that moment, God can take over. 
Um, I, I like all the points, Mars' practical application and, and Josh's, um, as well as, as Rebecca's points, very, very profound thoughts there it's for us to, to take with us. Um, in the sense that even though Elijah was a man of faith, he did go through a period of discouragement in his life. Just because we are in the faith doesn't mean we won't experience discouragement at times. Um, and um, yes, um, there are highs and lows in our Christian experience, and it sometimes happens, I think maybe Josh mentioned, or Rebecca, I'm not sure. Uh, they, he, Elijah experienced a miracle from God, mm. and irrespective of that, the next day, this woman, Jezebel, you know, threatens his life, and then he runs away. Mm. So men, some of you may be single today because you're afraid of women, uh, maybe a lesson for you to take there. Just uh, put it before the Lord and, and let the Lord solve the problem for you. Do not, do not run. Uh, but, but yes, I think, I think uh, on a more serious note, um, it, it's interesting how much fear Elijah experienced when, when this powerful woman just threatened his life. I mean, he... He, he experienced God's power, a miracle, uh, an intervention from God, and then the, the next second he's terrified by this woman. In any case, she was an evil woman, so uh, maybe it's understandable. Um, so, yes, I, I think it's important to understand that we may experience moments of discouragement in our Christian walk, but instead of running from God, we should be running to God. And we see that that's what happens with Elijah later on. In, in this story, which is in, in, in the Bible. And, um, I, th I think it gives us, um, it begs the question, what are the things that we run to or run away from? You know, and what we use as our kind of props to, to, to keep us going. Um, I think if we did a survey, we'd find actually that more people are suffering from depression and, and, and these low feelings than we actually are willing to admit. Um, sometimes we run away, um, but as Christians, we may not always reach for drugs and alcohol, some do. Sometimes we reach for food, um, you know, movies. And there, there are escapes, but really we, we're suffering from that emptiness inside. You know, uh, we're really discouraged. Um, we're just wondering why God isn't coming through in some circumstance. And we feel down too, just like Elijah did. Um, and, and, and we find our ways of running away from things, yeah? Sometimes we run away from responsibility. We might run away from relationships, you know? And um, I think one of the things that's striking me here in, in, in this lesson, this story about Elijah, is, is that God's trying to show us that how we should be reaching out to each other in these circumstances that, you know, even if we recognize a brother or a sister in these, you know, in a really low position, yeah, let's not be judgmental. Reach out to them, yeah? And, and, and I think the author pointed out, you know, that when God came to Elijah, he didn't say, what are you doing there, Matt? Well, he did say, eventually. But I mean, as in, um, uh, why didn't you have more faith? Why weren't you praying more? He just ministered to his needs. You know, sometimes we need to be, uh, to, to be like that. You know, that people just have needs and just look and just say, you know, that actually God actually just wants us sometimes to just reach out and touch people at their point of need, okay? Not making any judgments. And then God is enabled to bring healing later on. I'm going to just share some statistics to let bring this home. So it says, based on the data from the World Health Organization, the most common disease worldwide affecting more than 300 million people each year does not always have obvious visible symptoms. Depression is the leading cause of disability worldwide and is a major contribution to the global burden of disease. So when we're talking about Elijah feeling depressed, we can see that this is saying that this is the most prevalent disease. We might think it might be cancer or high blood pressure or heart disease or all of these other diseases we might think are actually the leading cause. But as we can see from here, the World Health Organization is saying depression is one of those most critical diseases. Now, if we were to look around the room here, 
Could we see physically who is depressed? Or do we have a way? I'm going to bring this home. Do we have a way, especially when we're in church and we come into church, that we put on our church face and we walk in the church door that everything is fine, but inside of us our lives are crumbling apart, but we put on the face, we put on the mask that everything is fine. Where in our church can we go? So that when we are feeling like Elijah, where is that safe space we can go to where we can open up? Anyone in the panel like to share? Ideally, that that safe space should be church. And I think the question we maybe need to ask ourselves is, are we somebody who somebody else can come to? Um, I think as as Seventh-day Adventists, we struggle in our church with gossiping. Um, And I think... It's, it's difficult because if, if, if that's what we're doing as a church, then somebody will come in through the doors and know that they can't share that what they're going through because they're hearing somebody else's business, knowing that this could also be your business. Um, so yeah, it's really, it's really, really important that we are somebody that somebody else can, can go to. And I think that comes through being authentic, being real, and um, having a relationship with God. Having a relationship with God, we, we're not perfect. So ultimately, he can change our character. Yeah, um, I just want to add to that. The thing I love about the Bible, you know, is um, the, the, the beauty of the Bible is that it's full of stories that resonate with everybody. There's not a story in the Bible that doesn't necessarily or doesn't relate to somebody in some way. Mm. And the only reason you're not in it is because all the stories are written right here that we need. Do you get what I'm saying? That's the only reason you're not in it. You are writing your own story. I say that because everybody comes into the church and outside of the church with a story. Do you know what I mean? So we're talking about discouragement, we're talking about encouraging one another. Everyone has their own identity and their own story that's been written or is being written as, as we speak. And ultimately, you know, what is your part to play in that story? Are you going to be an uplifting individual in that person's life? Um, you know, I think we're all here and I think we should all agree that we should all be here to serve one another. Uh, as Jesus' example is, he served um, while he was here on earth and are we doing that for one another? You know, this topic of depression should be a really easy one. You know, somebody's needs need to be addressed. Are we doing that? If somebody is in need, are we serving them? The answer to that question should be yes. You know, if the answer to that question in your mind is no, why not? What do you need to do? What part of your story, your identity is, is, is limiting your capacity to want to be able to resonate and, and engage with somebody else where their need is? Um, and that's just a thought, food for thought for everybody in this room, everybody at home, um, for myself as well included. But ultimately, yeah, depression doesn't just happen. Um, you know, depression doesn't just spring up on people. Ultimately, what is your participant? What are you? Or how have you participated? Sorry, in helping someone um, um, overcome, or even, for instance, avoid potentially getting to a point where they might be depressed and, and, and alone, or feeling alone, as it seems. I think it's important to help those who feel discouraged. But as a general principle, I, I think it's good to, to serve one another, irrespective of whether we feel discouraged or not. Because that's, that's the thing. I mean, I may look at your faces, and some of you smile, uh, others do not smile. Those who do not smile may be happier than those who smile. Mm. So none of us actually knows what's going on in, in your lives. Only God knows. Mm. And that, that is why it's important to show care compassion and give a smile to everyone in the church. Mm. Uh, I know that some of you are more reserved than others. Uh, You know, uh, some of you are quieter than others and it's more difficult to interact. Mm. But as a general principle, we need to show kindness and compassion to everyone around us because we don't know what they're going through. So as a general principle, yes, you may be suffering uh, from discouragement and depression, I don't know that, but my responsibility as a Christian mm. is to treat you with, with kindness, irrespective of that. Mm. And so I think that if, if our attitude in the church was, was to change to the extent that, you know, we would smile at, at, at each other and, and hug each other when we can, um, you know, that would, would, would make a big difference. Um, and it would also encourage the person suffering from discouragement to open up. Um, and try to interact. Now, I understand that those who suffer from depression do not open up easily, and, and that's a different story. But as, as far as we're concerned, we, we have to, to be there for one another, be kind, be compassionate, and show that through our actions and facial expressions. You know, facial expressions convey a lot. 
Um, so those of you who have problems with your facial expressions, <laughs> uh, look in the mirror and practice, please, because that, that, that does help. Um, uh, I know that we all have good hearts, but, but some of us convey more than others. Uh, and we're all encouraged to convey positive emotions and, and, and feelings. Um, on this, oh, I know Arnold mentioned the fact that some of us find comfort and refuge in food. Well, those of you who know me would know that I like to eat. Uh, and of course, that, that's not because, you know, I, I'm discouraged. I just, I like to eat, I like food. But um, of course, some of us may use food as a form of mm, treatment. Uh, not, not, it's not the, the appropriate form of treatment, but find refuge in, in food, and that can become a problem, that can become uh, a form of, of illness, and we have to be careful with that. However, in Elijah's story, we read that he was offered food, and he did eat. So sometimes, when we go through tough times, a good meal might help. Of course, not to excess, we don't have to abuse food. But sometimes, you know, having a proper meal and rest, as in the case of Elijah, can make a big difference. So we read that uh, in verse 6, uh, 1 Kings 19, it says, Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Mm -hmm. And the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that for 40 days and 40 nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. So sometimes, you know, uh, God provides different ways uh, which can help us to regain not only our physical strength, but also our, our emotional and, and the spiritual strength. Uh, and that's why we have to adjust according to what the Lord instructs us and, and follow his, his directions. Depression, that word. Depression is so serious that I, I, would, I would say you don't go to, I mean, the church should be a safe space. I, I, I do agree. But um, relationship is key. Now, you can go to the wrong person and that person lead you to the point of suicide. That is how severe depression is and that's how serious depression is. Now, fortunately for me personally, at Battersea Church, we have four elders, and I trust all four of them. So I would easily go to any one of them if something is going on. And I'm really blessed in that way. And I'm really grateful for, for the, the elders we have at Battersea Church. Um, but it is also okay if you don't have that kind of relationship with um, members of the church. You can seek help outside as well, professional help. Now, as well as being a teacher, I'm a psychosexual therapist. So I specialize in treating persons with sexual dysfunctions. But sometimes I have a couple in front of me going through that kind of situation, or I have a male patient going through some kind of issues sexually. Now, if, the, if depression is the cause of that issue, I have to treat them for depression first. If I don't treat them for depression first, I could give them the tools they need and they'll go home and the problem will still be there because the root problem has not been fixed. Mm. So I'm saying this to say that if you can't find anybody in your local church to trust the, the prayer group or um, the elders or whoever, you can't find somebody, in your, a family member, it is okay to seek help, speak to your GP. Your GP will send you, um, recommend you you know, to see a specialist and so on. I know a lot of Adventists, and this is from experience, are afraid of therapists, and they're afraid of therapy, and they feel that prayer can fix everything. So I could have a sore foot, and I could pray, Lord, please heal my sore foot. And I sit here with that sore foot, and there's a hospital next door, or a clinic next door. You see, so we have to be practical about these things. Depression is very serious, and the lesson touches on it very deeply. And we have to take it very seriously. It is crippling our church, especially now during this pandemic. <clears throat> a church of 500 and plus members, you're finding 30 people coming to church. What's happening with those at home? A lot of them are depressed. So I would encourage us to look out for those um, members who are not coming to church. It could be 
they are going through some kind of mental illness. So we need to speak to each other. That's it. You, I think it's the apostle who puts it simply, bear ye one another's burdens, mm -hmm. and um, so fulfill the law of Christ. And I think when he said one another's burdens, he's clearly saying that, you know, actually there's going to be times when I'm going to need you, mm -hmm. yeah? I may be reaching out to you now, but there's going to be times when you're going to need to reach out to me. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, we can fulfill, you know, uh, the law of Christ in our lives. I think if we bring this really, really home, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was there and he was saying to the disciples, you know, watch and pray. And, you know, he went and they weren't there. And it got to the point that if we read in the Bible, it says that God sent an angel to strengthen him. Mm -hmm. So if Jesus at his point of need, God sent an angel to strengthen him, that the same applies to us that when we are at those low moments we don't have to be spiritual we don't have to think that by me saying this is how i feel that it means it's a lack of faith no there are times when we are going to feel really really low and really really down and at those times we need to reach out and one of the organizations from the church that we can reach out which you i don't know if that's the word based here is cornerstone counseling service that that organization, I've been a part of them, I was a part of it when it first set up, then had to give up um, being there, and then during the lockdown, we started having um, a listening service, so the listening service is open from eight o'clock in the morning till 12 o'clock every night, every day. Um, so if you are feeling depressed, and you are feeling low, and you want someone there to listen to, um, if you just go on the website and link, link up Cornerstone Counseling Service, you will find someone there who's prepared to listen to you. They're not going to judge you. They're not going to say anything about you, but just to be in that listening ear. And then if you go there and they feel that you need more than just listening, they have a counseling service. And they can also signpost you to other organizations. So for today, if that is you, if you're feeling depressed now, don't feel as if you have to suffer in silence, go get the help that you need. Okay, so I think we're um, coming to the end of Sabbath School. So if we'd like to start, we'll start from that end of the panel and work down. What's your takeaway on a personal level from today's lesson? Um, is, is that God's relationship to us, no matter what the circumstances, never changes. I'll be slightly longer than Arnold. Um, for me, I think the main first takeaway is that I help myself by helping others know Jesus. Mm. Um, just like the four men took the men to see Jesus for salvation and healing. I think that I too would, would um, be helped by such an experience. I lead others to Jesus and that helps me in, in so many ways. Um, I also think that when it comes to Elijah's experience, for instance, the second takeaway would be that the Lord strengthened him, the angel of the Lord touched him, and he was also offered food. I know I mentioned the importance of a good meal earlier on, as in physical food, but what is our food as Christians? Uh, the food is the word of God. Jesus says he is the bread of life. So we find comfort, we find solution to our discouragement by looking at Jesus, turning our eyes on Jesus, the bread of life, but also by reading his word, the Bible. So this would be the two uh, main takeaways for me. Amen. Um, starting with Elijah's story, I think it's important to know that even though we are spiritual and we have a strong faith that we can be down, we can be depressed, um, and that Jesus can, can help us in that as well if we turn to him. So it's building that relationship with him now to know that maybe when we're going through those situations that we can turn to him. And then being that individual, that friend in, in terms of the paralytic as um, a friend who, who I can also help. It's important that as an individual within the church that I can be somebody that somebody can turn to. There's a meme in, in ending. Um, there's a meme. And it goes that inside the church somebody's phone was ringing and the elders came to him and he said um Shh, be quiet be quiet and on the flip side of it there's somebody in the bar 
they pour their drink over, they break the glass, and the, bar, the waitress come to him and they say, I'm so sorry, how can we help you? Can we get you another drink? And it's to say that sometimes you're, you're treated better outside than you are in the church. And it's important for us to just be mindful with whatever it is that we're doing, to really just try and show love and compassion, regardless of the situation that we might be in. Yeah, um, so short and sweet. Um, my main takeaway today is that it's okay to not be okay. Um, because we're all gonna experience that at some point, that's a fact. Um, and knowing that that's a fact, we know or we should be prepared and armed, ready for the fact that we're gonna go through tribulation. Um, but as we know in Romans, it says that tribulation builds patience and hope and strength. So ultimately, knowing that you're gonna go through tribulations, knowing that you, you, you are gonna find it difficult, you know you're not the only one. We're all here, we're all here, and we all go through not necessarily exactly the same thing, but we'll be going through something. So at some point even today, you know, I'd invite each and every one of you to turn to your neighbor, somebody you don't know, you haven't spoken to today, just give them an uplifting word and a word of encouragement, um, as I will today as well myself. So, um, and then ultimately again, you know, seek support. You know, do not be afraid to seek support. Um, whether that's a quiet word in, in private, you know, at home, whether that's a, a, an encouraging word from the Lord, a sign, a signal, whatever that might be. Um, but ultimately again, you know, these people in this building, people, family, friends at home, seek support and, and, and obviously kind of um, reach out. Don't be afraid to do that. So um, what I got from um, this lesson. So um, Sister Ellen G. White did sum it up for me um, this week. And in her book, um, Prophets and Kings, if you have that book, Prophets and Kings, um, chapter 12, page 162, it says, into the experience of all there come times of keen disappointment and utter discouragement. Days when sorrow is the portion and it is hard to believe that God is still the kind benefactor of his earthborn children. Days when troubles harass the soul till death seems preferable to life. It is then that many lose their hold on God and are brought into the slavery of doubt, the bondage of disbelief. Could we at such time discern the spiritual insight, the meaning of God's providences, we should see angels seeking to save us from ourselves, striving to plant our feet upon a foundation more firm than the everlasting hills, and new faith, new life would spring into being. And I say amen. Um, my closing thought would be to, in life, be real with yourself, like, you know, the paralytic man was real with himself. When he went before Jesus, he didn't make excuses to say that he wasn't who he was. And I think the first thing is to be real with ourselves. And then once we're real with ourselves, find people around us that we can be real to. That we don't have to put up the barriers and put the mask on. Have people in our lives that we can go to when we're going through, like, happy times as well as sad times and say to them, this is where I am at that time. And when we do that, then we can get the help that we need at that time. And then when others are going through difficult times, then we can be that help. Because sometimes the experiences in life that we go through, they're a set up for us to help others who then go through those same needs. And because we've been there, we'll meet them empathetically and not through a textbook or through theology. And I think that's what God, through this lesson, God is saying to us, be real. And as we're real then to ourselves, then we can be real to others. So I'd like to say thank you to everybody um, for being a part of the panel discussion today. Um, So I should say thank you to the um, panel and for being with us today and enjoy the rest of your Sabbath day with us. Thank you. Thank you. Do you remember, I remember the colour code? Yeah. yeah.
I wanted to say thank you for the sharing, amazing testimonies, experience that we just heard. And the series that we're having, just like I said, is, is an amazing and powerful tool that we have to share. So free to rest, rest in Christ is exactly what we need to share with the other out there. Probably never really thought of meeting Christ. And here we are with this powerful message. Now we're going to be listening to the smooth sound by Anthena. Thank you. Let's, let's enjoy. Just let's listen. One, two. Sorry about this. Hey! 
Was amazing thank you so much and thank you everyone who's watching there at home and you guys are wonderful I, you know it's so amazing that I can see your faces Do you know after this coronavirus I keep looking and I couldn't see the faces now I praise God I can see your faces thank you so much so we just come into your end and it's been amazing uh, the ministry of healing it's <laughs> It's just so much into it, isn't it? And then I keep thinking, at the beginning, God created us in His own image to be with Him, to worship Him. And then we know that every time we are close to, to God, do you know, the fellowship with Jesus, have you noticed that, you know, it's self-healing? And another thing, did you know that just looking at brothers and sisters, talking to the brothers and sisters. Did you notice that you feel good? Good is amazing, isn't it? I just love it. God is love. And rest in Christ, really, truly. I really hope by the experience that we heard, and I'm sure we, we took the experience also they've been going through, we also have our own. It's just like one of them said, we are writing you know our journeys and the history so the present team is going to come and then after that we're going to have the closing prayer thank you so much everyone. I am not the praise team. Um, this is the first time that I have been in church since the pandemic. It's so good to be worshipping with brethren. So good. I don't know how you're feeling, but I'm feeling really good right now. And I'm here to just talk to you about something that happened on August the 8th. On August the 8th, um, a group of us went out witnessing. Now, this all took place from a WhatsApp group that we're a part of, and this WhatsApp group is for singles. And it's actually like a mini church because there's different departments. There's the prayer ministry, evangelism ministry, which I'm a part of. And I said, I didn't join this ministry to be putting on programs for the church. I'm really interested in doing something outside of the church. And so that's what we did. Now, in this WhatsApp group, there's people from all over the world. It's an international group. And so on August the 8th, people from Jamaica, from the USA, from St. Lucia, from all over the world, all went out and evangelized. Now, it was a wonderful experience. Who, I mean, is witnessing exciting? Should it be fun? Because I had fun. I really enjoyed the day, and everybody who came out with us 
had a fantastic time. It was so good. And I really want to, you know, here are just some photos of what happened, you know. And, you know, we, we did a prayer and fast before we went out. And God was with us that day. There was just unity. Do you know that most of us had never met before? We didn't know each other. We were complete strangers. And we met with the purpose of going out to witness. We met outside Brixton Tube Station. We had a fantastic time. Do you know, in the process of witnessing, we actually met someone who was of another faith, and we invited him to come along and have a meal with us. You know, it was just a really good day. The positioning... I was here, someone was outside Brixton's tube station, and she was impressed to give someone a great controversy, but he had already walked past, but because I was there, she shouted to me and asked me to give it to him. It was just teamwork. The whole, you could really feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. It was a wonderful experience. And I just don't want to talk about it myself. I would like some of the people that came along to really give us a good inside view of, of that day and what actually happened. All I can say, folks, is that if you're thinking of going out, just make sure beforehand that you pray and fast, because I don't normally do that, and this time I did that. And one of the, the um, ladies who's in our group, um, we'll be speaking to her later, her name is Louise, she actually started a Bible study with three of her flatmates as a result of doing the prayer and fasting. So it, it's highly recommended. Okay, Kalita, good morning. Kalita is one of the um, ladies who joined us on, um, in our group because I had to advertise it in the group, see who would respond, and um, Kalita was one of them. So, Kalita, what made you decide to get involved in the August the 8th outreach? Um, yeah, so I've not really been involved in that much outreach before, but when the opportunity came up and I saw it on the WhatsApp group, um, I just thought it would be a really good opportunity to firstly meet some of the people that I've actually <clears throat> been having communications with during the pandemic um, and having friendships with and meet them for the first time and more importantly um, to just share some of the blessings and some of the truth that I've been blessed to be given so yeah um, I just saw it as a really good opportunity to you know mingle with um, believers and, and non-believers and, and use some of the skills that I've been trying to, to build um, for evangelism as well. Okay, so what was your experience of the day? In, in, in two words, challenging and fun. Okay, yeah. so what did you learn? Um, so I learned a lot, to be honest, on the day, but um, I think one of the main learning points when you're evangelizing, I think it's not something, you know, it's always going to be a work in progress. But for me, it's learning to listen to the Holy Spirit. Because um, you've, you've got instincts about who you think might engage with you, um, who you think might take a book, um, you know, and you just try and follow your gut. But it's learning to not just follow your gut, but to learn to follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit because, you know, sometimes someone that looks quite unlikely will suddenly, you know, be interested and, um, you know, and you might have just kind of not tried very hard with them because they didn't look like they would be interested or whatever. So, yeah, just learning, continually learning to follow um, the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And um, I haven't mastered it definitely in that one episode, but, um, yeah, it's a continual learning process, which... I built on that day so yeah I was really happy to do that so what were your highlights um so there were several highlights like like um you said Angela you know we had the meal that was really nice um afterwards um but for me it was like the individual experiences that I had with people on the street um that really were the highlights for me um so what I'll just give one um example there was one person that really stuck out to me that I really managed to have quite a good engagement with. And um, basically, um, I looked at him. He was a long-haired hippie guy um, on his way to um, a meditation, um, a mass meditation um, somewhere in central London. And he was just rushing off to Brixton Tube Station. And um, so, you know, I, I offered him a uh, Steps to Christ. 
and he said to me, oh, I need to educate you about Christ. And I said, oh, really? Okay. Okay. Um, you know, I'm not going to engage in a debate here on the street. I'm going to listen. So he started telling me about how to become a Christ yourself through Christ consciousness. And I just kind of listened um, to his points, didn't agree with him. But we had a nice exchange. And, um, you know, one of my points was kind of, you know, how can I become a Christ when I have this problem of sin? And I believe that he's the only one that can deal with it. And I can't deal with it myself. Therefore, I can't become a Christ, you know. Um, but we had, we had a quick exchange. Um, it was good. Um, and he rushed off to Brixton Tube Station to go to his um, New Age uh, meeting. And, um, yeah, but before he rushed off, um, he said, you know, um, just because of what we discussed and the fact that I was willing to listen but also share my thoughts and I wasn't really pushing anything, he said, you know, I will take one of those steps to Christ. Thank you. Sounds quite interesting. Um, so he took one and he went off to his... Um, meditation and um, I carried on doing the, 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 the evangelism kept on distributing books kept on talking to people and I saw him rushing back in the other direction I was like hey how was it I thought you were out for the day and he's like actually uh, I forgot something at home so I'm just rushing back to grab something I said would you like one of these as well since you're on your way home you can drop it off at home. It's a book about Bible prophecy called The Great Controversy. He said, do you know what? I think that might have been what I forgot. That might have been why I came back. I'll take that from you, thank you. And I was like, yeah. So, and he, and he went off and he had the Steps of Christ and The Great Controversy and we had a nice discussion and he, he didn't feel like I was pushing anything on him. Um, and I know for a fact that he will read that book, you know, and he told me, um, that whilst he was, um, you know, on, on his way to the station, he did actually um, start looking at the Steps to Christ, and he said, there's really interesting. Thank you. This is a good book. I'm going to continue reading it. So, yeah, he will read those books, and I, he will be blessed. And that was a highlight for me, because I know that, you know, even if, um, you know, you feel silly a lot of the time, you know, standing there and a lot of people looking at you up and down or just a complete blank in you. Um, <laughs> But you get those moments and you really feel like, yeah, someone's going to have a nugget today, you know, so yeah. Okay. So would you do it again? Oh yeah, 100%, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah, I encourage everyone to do it. Um, you know, whether it's with your own churches or if we get together and do another snagged um, singles ministries evangelism, definitely. Okay, great, thank you. Um, now, I've got, okay, what words of witnessing, what words of encouragement could you give to anyone who has not been out witnessing? Yeah, so, um, like, for me, I'm not um, the best speaker in the world. I'm not the most amazing, you know, shining example of Christ um, that could possibly exist, you know, but God, God could use a lightning bolt to reach somebody, um, but he chooses to use weak vessels like myself. Um, but it's your willingness and your faith that he can use. And, um, you know, you might think you don't have much um, or you might think you're not a good speaker um, or that you're not perfect, but Christ sees you as perfect. And you don't have to be perfect to share, but you'll be perfected as you do share. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kalita. So Kalita was one of the first people to respond when I put the advert out in the WhatsApp group. Um, it was actually myself and Royan who organized um, this. And there were a lot more people, but they're not all here today. But I think Louise is here. She told me she would be here anyway. Oh, there she is. Hello, Louise. Good morning. Hi, morning. So what was your experience of the day? Well, my experience was good, but it, because it was my first time worshipping with fellow members of SNAG and also first time giving out literature since the pandemic. Yeah, mine as well. Um, 
So what would you say that you learned from the experience? Well, from the experience, I learned that people in the UK, they're very busy. However, there are still a few persons who are willing to stop and hear about the word of God. So that Where are you good. from? Are you not from here? No, I'm from St. Lucia. Okay, so you're only over here for a while. Yes, but today's but you decided to come out witnessing with us on August the 8th. Absolutely. Okay. All right, so would you do it again? Absolutely, I'd definitely do it again because there are still people hungry for the word of God. So I would do it again. Excellent. Thank you for coming out with us. We had a fantastic time, as you can see, and as you have heard. I'm wondering if um, we could put the video on now. So we just made a video of what happened, just a snapshot of what actually happened on that day. And I think there's gonna be opportunities for you to be going out later on today, maybe about four o'clock, I believe, after lunch. So I hope you have a wonderful time, like we did. Um, so there's a video, if you could play that, please. So it was planned as a one-off event, but people just had such a good time. They said, when are we going to do this again? 
So I think um, it may become a regular feature now, so maybe every month. Okay, God bless everyone. Hi, happy Sabbath, everyone. Uh, so I've been asked to do a closing prayer for this first um, part of our day today. Um, so just to thank God for the Sabbath school we've had about being free to rest and just to move us forward into the next part of the program. Let us pray. Lord, thank you so much for bringing us here in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for the panel, the Sabbath school, and all that will follow today. Lord, we pray for those who are afflicted with illnesses, those who are suffering from depression, fear, just like Elijah did, or the man with paralysis. Lord, we pray that those who need you will know where to find you and seek refuge um, in your love and care. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us today and continue to bless us all as we continue with your ministry. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hi, it's me again. I just have a little announcement about the Blue Zone Cafe. I'm not sure how many of you heard about the Blue Zones, but it's an amazing place all over the world that people want to live healthily, and they are very beautiful indeed. So this program actually is Central London Church program, and then uh, we only have one week. So we've been very blessed actually for the past three weeks. And many people came through our doors. And, and the blessing is just amazing that, you know, people were like, I was looking for this. Let me just a little bit, uh, give you a little bit of introduction about the Blue Zone, if you do not know yet. So Blue Zone is not just about the seven-day Adventist thing, okay? But we're there, yes? So it's about a place where communities actually, they stick together and then they leave you know, healthily. It's just not about food. It's about having, you know, a healthy lifestyle, you know, sleeping well. The eight remedies. We know about the eight remedies, yeah? Right? Yes? The eight remedies? Okay. So when I said about the communities, one of, you know, key things really stuck me out is how they interact with each other as a community. Do you know the helping each other, the talk, do you know that the talk that makes a difference? The smile, always, you know, the smile. Just like Felicia said, some of us, you know, we think we're smiling, but we're not. And some of us are smiling, we don't even know we're smiling. So <laughs> all this really makes an interactive, do you know, uh, community whereby we support each other. So the Blue Zone Cafe is just here at the Central London Church and uh, is all vegan and delicious meals. So we have uh, four actually delicious and it's, it's a kind of being designed, architected by our masters here at the church. And um, so what I really just wanted to say, please do come and take advantage. Let me just tell you the, the time. So it's going to be tomorrow from 2 to 6 p.m. And then it's going to be on Tuesday from 5 to 9 p.m. And then on Friday, I love Fridays. Fridays are amazing. Why? Because we get to do karaoke. Not me, though, because I don't have the voice. But <laughs> so on Fridays, it's 5 to 8.30. We only serve the burgers and the smoothies. People being trying this movie that they're like, oh my days, are really, really, really healthy. They're really tasty also. So Friday is the cafe worship. So we have a live team here and the guys, they are really, really, really good. So if you have the voice or if you don't have the voice, so come and enjoy. Okay, so that was just the little announcement that I had. Uh, now we're going to have uh, Dr. Elder. She's gonna to speak to us about the vaccine. And after that, we're going to have a break for 10 minutes. I hope I'm right this time. Thank you so much.
Good morning, everyone. It's so exciting and wonderful to see you all here again. It must be about a year and a half, a good 18 months since I was last here with you. And thank um, Anel very, very much for allowing me this privilege to offer you a 30-second piece of information. Now, all week, the story of Noah has been playing in my mind. But I have no message to offer you today. All I can say is that the information is like this. I'm excited because this week I was given permission to run a pop-up clinic here in this very room that we're in. And that means that anybody who wishes can come and have the vaccine. It will be Pfizer, which is excellent. I've done a great deal of research and it has no squalene in it, which is um, the shark liver oil, so it is excellent for vegans, excellent for vegetarians, and excellent for anybody age 16 or over. So that's the information, and the message is that I won't be hugging anybody because I, uh, the majority of my patients have, are from overseas, and I would not like the Nelda variant to appear. <laughs> so do come along if you haven't already had it and you wish to, and who knows, you might be able to save your life and possibly others. Thank you so much. That's why I haven't gone into the story of Noah. It's entirely choice. Brothers, come on, we are in the house of the Lord. I would advise you, if you have anything to say, you still can say, but let's be ordered here in the house of the Lord. Uh, Dr. Anilda is here. I'm sure she'll be able to talk to you if you have anything else to say. Okay, that's not, there's no need. Okay, so we're going to have time if you want to talk to doctor, and then you can view, you can sell your views. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much. Are there any other elders here? If there's any elders who are willing to help officiate in the anointing service that's going to take place today, if there are any who are willing to do so, just indicate and we'll send you through to the... There's no pressure. There's no obligation. But if you feel impressed that you'd like to support that service, just give a little wave. Okay, so I'm looking through the audience so people can make eye contact or avoid my eyes if they don't want to be involved. Okay. It just means that the anointing service will take a little longer, but that's fine. That's fine. Okay. We're going to be starting in just a minute, encouraging people. Do take a comfort break if you need it for the bathroom, but we'll be starting shortly. Okay. Thank you so much. attention please just before the program ensues let me just introduce myself so my name is pastor Colin Stewart I'm the pastor of the church and um, I want us to remember that this is a place of order fellowship wonderful you know Sabbath blessings uh, but, you know, I, I, I want us to be mindful. The vaccination is a personal choice. No one needs to argue about it. Definitely not in the house of God. 
So, you know, whatever announcements are made from the front and promotions, it's fine. We don't have to convince each other. Okay? It's a personal choice. And we are respectful to those that take it and those that decide not to take it. Okay? So let us have a wonderful Sabbath. Let us in, enjoy the day, the plans that are being made. We're looking forward to wonderful fellowship, and I trust that you will enjoy the rest of the Sabbath day. Thank you very much. Um, maybe I should just mention there are two churches in the building, a church downstairs as well, and um, we will not really be using the back toilets that our toilets are assigned on this side, so we have to come through this door, down the stairs, male and female toilets are this side, okay? Um, so, yeah, we're going to just move on with the program. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, everyone. One, two, one, two. Can I get a louder happy Sabbath? Happy Sabbath, everyone. God is good. When I say all the time, your response needs to be, God is excellent, all right? God is good all and all the time. God is good and all the time. Amen. Um, we're going to be doing so many, well, a number of songs today, and we'd really like you to engage in the singing. If you don't know the song, just listen and try and join where you can. But before we start singing, I'll just share a Bible verse with us. Psalm 47, 6 to 7 says, sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises for God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. So, we're hoping that as we sing these praises to God, as we sing these songs to God, we sing the songs with understanding. Amen? Amen.
a fresh anointing coming to this place. Lord, come into this place. One more time, Lord, coming to And welcome all. I'm so delighted as um, I see a very young audience and I feel very privileged. The music was so nice to bring us to this level, to this point. I'd like everyone to spend just a few seconds and prepare your hearts for worship. So welcome everyone here and online to Central London Church, I think it's Advent Center, and in particular to, or, and indeed, to the um, women, or rather, the singles event being held here. Um, Evidently, you're bringing it back. It's a program that's been going on for a while. So, welcome. I don't know what your week has been like, but you're in the right place. Because we're told to go boldly to the throne of grace and also to enter his house with thanksgiving. I'm going to invite you to, strange way of putting it, but to... Psalm um, 95 in bringing you to worship. In readiness, I shall read. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is great. The Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The seas is his, and he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship, bow down. And... bow down. Let us kneel, or I should have asked you, please stand in the presence of the Lord. Will you? So it says, let us kneel, but there may not be space to kneel here. So let us, let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is God. And we are the people of his pasture, 
and the shape of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, hearken not, harden not your heart. We praise God. We bless him. You know why you're here today. I pray that the day will be a wonderful day for you. You'll gain a blessing. And I'll just say a prayer. Mighty God, Heavenly Father, we come into your courts, O oh God. Let us remember our purpose. Let us remember that we're here to love and adore you and to continue to worship you as we worship you in our respective homes. Father God, let your presence radiate in this place. May we keep our minds focused. We love you, Lord. We adore you. And I pray, O oh Lord, that when we leave this place, all will be well and that we continue the rest of the day and the week throughout. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, church. It's so awesome to stand here. If you get a chance to do that, if you come back, you see, well, actually, you'll be leaving by then. But it is so cool to see so many people in one place worshiping God, isn't it? How many of you, it's the first time since the pandemic that you arrived in, like, in the Fellowship of the Believers, and even upstairs has a bunch of people. That, that's awesome. I see a couple of hands. Okay, it's good to see that you guys really weren't afraid. You got out and you met with some brethren and sisters, um, you know, the moment that we got opportunity to. Just wanted to um, start off uh, today's, the remaining worship session with just saying, it is so amazing that we even woke up this morning. Lamentations 3.23 says that it is by the mercies of God that we're not consumed. His mercies are new every morning. And what I would like us to do right now, and if I would love everybody to collaborate with me on this one, we're going to together, on the count of three, are going to take a very deep, deep, deep breath. Hold it when we take it in, and then slowly let it out. Is that all right? One, two, three. Let's do this. <sighs> that was so good. <laughs> that was perfect. Guys, the fact that we just breathed in, it's evidence, it's proof that God's mercy is upon us. And you know what, what's more awesome? That you chose not to stay in bed in your jammies and plug into Zoom or, you know, YouTube or something like that, but you decided to come out here and meet with your brothers and sisters in Christ. There is no, there is no replacement for that, is there? And when I think about heaven, that's what it's going to be like. You know, when Jesus was describing eternity, he was describing it in terms of relationships. And that's why he created you and me. And that's why he woke you and me up this morning. Because he wants a connection and relationship with us. And he has a purpose for us for this day. And I believe you are here today and I'm here today for a purpose that is divine. And last exercise I'm going to ask you to do because we're going to be sitting for a while. I want you to look to your right and left and maybe back if you're sitting at the front row or nobody is beside you. Just look at a couple of people around you. Just, just lock in the eyes. Look at each other. Give each other a smile. Okay. <laughs> now, the people that you're looking at, just FYI, God will come up for a purpose this morning as well. Awesome. This is so cool. And if you haven't spoken a word yet, I want you to turn to anybody of all the people you looked at now and tell them you are so special. I want everybody to be told that by somebody. <laughs> uh, come on, guys. <laughs> Amen. All right. I could go home now because I can see you guys mingling, and this is what church is all about, isn't it? All right. 
after the service today, we're going to have a potluck lunch. How many of you are excited about that besides me? Okay, guys, we're gonna, this is gonna be my first potluck since pandemic. I am looking forward to it. And apparently, there is room for all. So guys, don't run away. Uh, and then at four o'clock today, we're gonna have the street ministries during the Sabbath school. That was, there was a little, or a couple of testimonials on that. That was so inspiring. So please, any able body who wants to see how God can use you and lead you in the most frontline ways, please join the crew. We're gonna have a street ministry, handing out uh, uh, Christian literature, connecting with people, talking with them. If you're scared, it's okay, come. We'll put you with somebody who's not as scared, okay? But we're gonna have some amazing experiences and some testimonies as well. And then this evening as well at 7 p.m., we're going, Snack Ministry is organizing this special, um, uh, like a drama, I guess, right? Uh, it has to do with vaccination. Now, nobody's going to be vaccinating anybody here today, okay? But there's going to be a really cool drama. And this is especially also going to be the time for the singles to mingle. And I can see a lot of single people around here, right? You don't need to raise your hand, but please come, okay? This day is for all of us to connect and meet and mingle and just enjoy each other's company and get to know more people who share the same faith. And just as we get into the remaining worship, I wanted to open um, to one scripture, and that's in Psalm chapter 81 and verse 10, and it says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. God says, open your mouth wide and I shall fill it. How many of us need help in our journey from Egypt to the promised land? I invite all of us to open our spiritual minds, our spiritual mouth, our, our, our thoughts, our hearts to whatever the Lord has to speak to us right now and through the remaining of the Sabbath. Let's open our mouth wide so God can fill us. Amen. So as we open our spiritual minds for God, for what God has for us today, I'd like us to stand as we sing him, a hymn called Oh for a Thousand Times. Oh 
musicians, sing this by yourself. Come together. to have a season of prayer. You can take a set or you can assume a posture of prayer that you want. So before, before the four uh, prayer people come to pray, we're going to sing one verse of a song called He Our Honest Prayer, O Lord. And then they will pray and then we'll close with the last verse of that song. this prayer. Gracious Father, our God, we come before you at this time praising, glorifying, and magnifying your name. For there's none like you, Lord. Father, through the past six days, some of us has been stressed. Some have been depressed. We have been through many things. But through it all, O oh God, you have kept us, and we thank you. As we come to worship you, we pray that your spirit will abide with us. I pray that you will deliver us, O oh God, from all evil. There are many people here, the single, the married. But as we come, Lord, with one aim and one determination, that is to meet with you, Lord, and to have a closer walk with you but there are many obstacles in our way we pray you will deliver us Lord you know the things that we might be going through father the bondage that some of us might find ourselves in the different addiction that we are hooked upon oh God I pray you will deliver your people today I pray Holy Father that you will 
continue to do for us far more than we can ask or imagine. I pray for a fresh anointing upon your preacher today, Lord. As he speak to us, O oh God, may we see Christ Jesus high and lifted up. Help us to look beyond our present situation, O oh God, and help us to see what we can become in the future. Thank you, O oh God, for being with us. Thank you for the blessed hope we have in Christ Jesus. And thank you for hearing us this morning. In Jesus' name. Father God, we come to you on this your Sabbath day. When you set this day apart, you told us that it was going to be a day of restoration, a day of healing. Father God, so many of us as we were studying this morning in our Sabbath school lesson, so many of us are going through health challenges, spiritual challenges, problems to do with our mental health and well-being. Father God, we come to you today and we're asking you to anoint us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. We're coming to you today, Father God, and saying to us, heal our minds, Father God. Give us the peace that passes all understanding. Father God, heal our families. So many families at this time are broken, but we come to you this morning, Father God, asking you to heal our families. We come to you this morning and we're saying to you, Father God, pour out a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit into our lives so that we are able to have that spiritual healing that so many of us want. Father God, we pray that those who are sick in the church, either here physically or online or in our families, we bring them all to you today, Father God, and we ask you to give them their physical healing that so many are praying for. And Father God, we come to you today and we ask you to make us whole. Help us to know that we are special in your sight. Give us the physical healing that we need. Give us the emotional healing that we need. Give us the spiritual healing that we need. And help us to know that we're not alone because we're all part of the family of God. This is my prayer in the name of your son with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, the heavyweight champion of the universe. Mm. <coughs> Father, we come before you, you who dwells between the cherubims. We come before you because you've invited us that we should come to your throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in our time of need. Father, we just want to um, come before you as, as, as a church. Thank you for this opportunity that we can fellowship on this day. And uh, we just want to uh, bring our, our purpose and our mission before you. Your word tells us that as we seek first your kingdom, help us to have a zeal to build your kingdom. Help us to have a zeal to seek the righteousness we need to be part of that kingdom. And you promise that if we do this, as we seek this, that you will add everything else. Every need that we have will be added unto us. And so we ask that you will give us this uh, desire in our lives, that we will, we will seek you with our whole heart, seek you like we've never sought you before, and that you will bring these things to pass. Lord, we want to we wanna lift up the, the missions that we have, the different ideas and different plans and different um, different things we've been involved in. I pray that you will go before us and that you will, you will work mightily as we um, connect with Christ. And as you prayed in John 17, that the Father will glorify you so that you could glorify him. And, and, and I, we pray the same prayer, Lord, that you will glorify us so that as we go out, that men will see our good works and not glorify us, but glorify you, our Father, our Father in heaven. Lord, we want to also ask that you will you will be with us as we you will be with us as we continue to, to, to look to you that you will help us to, to receive of your spirit and as we receive of your spirit you promise that you, you produce the fruit that we need because we can't do it by ourselves 
So we ask that you bring the necessary fruit that is that is needed. And we just want to want to want to pray that you help us so that as we as we come closer to you you know your word says as we walk in the light as you in the light that we'll have fellowship with one another and the blood of christ will cleanse us and so i pray for your cleansing upon in our lives i pray for your power in our lives i pray for those that are either seeking employment those that are looking to change their life um you know where they're trying to head to in their lives i pray you work in their situation or that you you know the future and you know the end from the beginning and i pray that you will bring all things to pass for, according to the, to your will for their best interest so lord all these things we ask and we pray if there's any other requests we lift it up before you in jesus name we've prayed amen holy 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 lord god almighty heaven and earth are filled with your glory Lord, we, your children, we come before you this moment. And Lord, we come seeking your blessing. Lord, I pray that may our mind be always focused on you. Give us a mind like you, O Lord, a mind capable of loving, a mind capable of discerning, O Lord. Lord, we pray, O Lord, that whatever skills that we have, may we not use it just for our profession and for employment, but may we use it, O Lord, for the glory of God. And may others see our work and they may be drawn to you father lord jesus i also pray lord to give us a heart which is kind a heart which is loving so that we may appear and that we may be attractive to other persons they may see us not as bitter christians but as loving brothers and sisters dear god Lord, I thank you and I praise you, Lord. Lord, I ask for restoration of that Eden pattern that you had given us for marriage, O Lord. May we realize that that pattern still exists and that is what you want for your people. Despite what, despite what society may deem acceptable, O Lord, may we return to the Eden blueprint of marriage. May there be a proliferation of godly relationships. Lord, I pray as well for relational maturity. May we not be selfish. May we not be vindictive. May we be loving to one another. May we humble and for, ask for forgiveness and forgive where necessary, Father. Lord, I also pray, may we carry ourselves in such a way that we may have that spiritual deportment, dear Lord. Bless us and keep us, Lord. And where we fail, may the Holy Spirit pray on our behalf. And may we always seek you, O Lord, because our strength is from you. Lord, when it seems as if everything is against us, may we always remember, O Lord, that you are for us. And that despite as the situation may appear, there, you are always within our presence. I thank you and I praise you, O Lord, for all that you have done. And I thank you and praise you, O Lord, for all that you will continue to do. And I give you praise in advance because, Lord, you are capable, Lord. You are the creator of the ends of the earth. Lord, those of us who are supposed to be married, Lord, you will choose our partners for us. I ask this humble prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
So as we continue in an atmosphere of prayer, uh, I'm not Edith Samamboa, but I'm filling in for her. We're going to go into a prophetic word. The word of God is powerful. I'm going to ask everybody to turn their scriptures to Jeremiah 33. And we're gonna, remain standing if you can, if you can. And what we're going to do at this time is, you know that the Bible talks about us having our land healed when we humble ourselves before him. Some of you may not remember a time, but I remember a time in the Adventist church when spaces like this wouldn't have been enough to hold uh, the people who had come to worship. I remember a time when we weren't having any lack for our pathfinders, when marriages, uh, summer would be full of people marrying. And this whole idea of singles ministry, to be honest, it wasn't needed uh, because singles were engaged, people were passionate. And you know there's a place in the scripture where we see that the enemy has gone in. And even though the, the master of the vineyard has planted good seed, we see that there are now thorns and thistles and things are not going right. And so when I see the challenges in this space, I think there's a need for us to reclaim the word of God so that we can again be a vibrant people, so that we can again be a people of, uh, of, of power, a people who believe the word of God, a people who speak on God's behalf, a people who have faith and see God honor it. And so I'm asking you to join me in this scripture that I've fallen in love with. And I want you to pray along with me as we speak this word. So we are in Jeremiah chapter 33. And it says in verse 6, Behold, I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure them and reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return and will build them as at the first. And so in the name of Jesus Christ, our prayer is that the sickness, the bondage, the, the restrictions, the lack of faith, the fear that has possessed God's people in the name of Jesus, this will no longer be our portion. We will be a people who believe in the word of God. We will be a people who receive God's cure. We will be a people who show forth his glory. You know, in the time of Israel, when Israel were obeying God, when they went out to battle and they won, they honored the name of the Lord. When they were prospering, when they were marrying, when they were having children, when their crops were doing well, these things honored God. We do not honor God by having an impoverished spirit. And so let us receive from God his renewal, his health, his cure. Those areas of captivity, we all know what bondage is and we experience it in different ways. It doesn't have to be that way. So let us receive liberty from our God. We continue in verse 8. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity whereby they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned, and whereby they have transgressed against me. And it shall be to me a name of joy. So we're supposed to be the people called by God's name. And when we're bogged down in sin, when we find anybody here prayed forgiveness for a sin a few too many times, anybody want to be able to say, God, like Joseph, how could I do this thing against you? And I want to say to us today that not in our own strength, but in Christ, it's possible. So may we be impressed to believe again that our God can make us to be a name of joy, a praise and an honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear of the good that he does unto us. And we shall fear and tremble for all the goodness, for all the prosperity that God will procure unto us. So when we are praying and preaching and lives are being changed and people are being healed, who gets the glory? God. And so we move on to verse 10. Thus saith the Lord, again there shall be heard in this place, which ye say shall be desolate without men and without beasts, even in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate, without man and without inhabitant and without beasts. What is it saying? This place had become impoverished. How many ladies have said before that there's no men in the church? Praise the Lord, there are men in the church today. Can I get a hallelujah? But God can send more. 
And it doesn't honor God for us to have a church. Yes, ladies, we are wonderful, but God didn't make one gender. And so I want to ask us today to open our mouths and to declare that God will send men and women. I want you at this time to thank God for healing this land, for restoring this space. So it won't be a place where there's only dresses and heels. There will be suits and ties. Praise the Lord, because this honors God and it creates health and balance in our communities and in our church. So, so it's good that we laugh, but open your mouth and bless God. Let's thank him. Let's praise him. I thank you, God, that you give men, you give women, you heal, Father God, and we receive your healing and your blessing in this place today. And here's my favorite verse. If you wish to, join me as we read verse 11. This is what God is going to do instead of captivity. There will be the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever, and of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. For I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first, saith the Lord. So whether or not you want to believe it, when you see a space, if you look, when enemies are attacking, they attack men and they take over the woman. But today we declare in the name of Jesus that we do not belong to the enemy. That men and women in this church, we are available to God. And God, we bless you for the blessings you are pronouncing over this congregation. We thank you, God, for healing our land. We thank you for returning men. We thank you for the voice of joy. We thank you, God, that we don't have to squabble and say there's not enough. For you are a God of abundance. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray today that as we raise our praises to you, O oh God, you will send healing on this land in the name of Jesus. So, Father God, we bless you, we honor you, we thank you because you are good and because you are able. In the name of Jesus, we're saying, Lord, we are ready for your change. Father God, we, not, we will not declare what we see, for you say we walk by faith and not by sight. So we praise you because you are good. We praise you because we shall not be ashamed. We praise you, Lord, that for our shame and confusion, you say you will give double. Father God, we rebuke depression. We rebuke loneliness, Father God. We rebuke shackles of sin in the name of Jesus Christ. And we receive, Lord, the oil of gladness. Father God, we rebuke the devil and his bondage, Lord, and his pain and suffering. And we receive from you, Lord, the garment of praise. So clothe your people today, we pray in the name of Jesus. May we be people, Lord. Lord, who serve you in spirit and in truth. We bless the name of Jehovah. We honor you, Jesus Christ, for making a way. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for filling our lives today. We give you all the honor and the glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord in your own voice. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You may remain standing if you can for the next four songs. If you can't, you can sit down. Amen. We're going to sing Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord. God is so good. Let's sing, my Jesus. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days. All of my days. I want to praise the wonders.
church, my Jesus, my Jesus. Regardless of whatever we've been through, we are still here. We are still here to proclaim his name because he is too great for us to complain. Thank you, Lord. Let's sing congregation. Oh Lord, how excellent.
that again, church. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. How excellent. Yeah. How excellent. Isn't he? Like you, there is none like you, none like you, none like you, none like you, none like you. Jesus, Jesus, excellent. There is, is thy name. Now, tenors, I want to hear you sing in all the earth. In, in all, all the earth. Yes. In all the earth. In all the earth. In all the earth. In all the earth. Everyone, Jesus. Jesus, excellent. Yes. from the rain. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. Everyone, my God. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God. Yeah. 
situation life hands at you God is making a way regardless amen
the honor and the glory. Amen. It's now time for our offering session. And really and truly, what do we think the greatest offering is? Fine, we're going to give our 10%, our 5% for some people, 20% or whatever percent. But perhaps really God is just looking for our lives. And not necessarily our lives, but our joy. Because he provides everything for us. And by literally being happy, we provide back to him. So let us give with joy. Um, we're not going to do the normal offering where people come to the front um, and drop it in the collecting box. But what we're going to do is I'm going to invite the deacons or ushers. They know where they are. They're going to stand. And then I'm going to pray. And then we're going to sing. And then they'll literally pass the collecting box round. So are the deacons ready? Okay. Let's just bow our eyes as we pray. Bow our heads and close our eyes as we pray. Our kind and heavenly Father, we are grateful for the gift of life. Please accept what we give back and help us to have joy in our hearts daily because you've given us life in Jesus' name. Amen. Silver and gold. Sabbath, everyone. The church is beautiful. The service is powerful. Praise the Lord. I'm going to read the Bible. The verse is April, for, uh, April uh, chapter 4, verse 12. It says, The word of God is alive and active 
sharper than any double-edged saw. It's cut every, it cut all all the way through, to where soul and spirit meet, to where joints and marrow come together. It judges the desire and thoughts of the heart. The second one. In Luke. 70. Verse 19. And Jesus said to. And Jesus said to him, get up and go. Go. Your faith has made you well. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Are we happy to be here today? Of course we are. Okay, well, it falls to me now to introduce the speaker for the hour. When I spoke with him some weeks ago and asked him what he would like to be said of him, I had in my mind things of, we used to go to primary school together many, many moons ago, back in the 80s. Um, he would not like to admit that himself, but that's the case. And we could talk of all the things that we used to get up to. However, he said to me, when you come to introduce me, don't tell them anything about me. Just say, it's about the message and not the man. And so I'm saying to you today, it's about the message. Focus on the message. However, circumstances would have it that he's unable to be with us here today. However, God being who he is always raises another. And so today we have another. We have another prophet, just like when Elijah thought that he was the only one. God had 7,000. And we have one of those 7,000 here today. And he is going to deliver a message to us from the king. Royal mail from the king, first class, marinated and saturated and seasoned by the Holy Spirit. He is going to give that to us today. However, what we'd like to do now is to have an intercessory word of prayer for the first speaker who was supposed to be with us here today. And I'm going to invite Elder Davis from my home church um, to come and help us intercede on the speaker's behalf. At this time, I'm going to invite all of us to bow our heads as we pray on behalf of the speaker who should have been here. But before I do so, I'm just going to read a few verses from Psalm 41 and verse 1 to 3 where the Bible says, Oh, the joy of those who are kind. The Lord rescues them when they are in trouble. The Lord protects them and he keeps them alive. He gives them prosperity in the land and rescues them from their enemies. The Lord nurses them when they are sick and restores them to health. Let us pray. Our Father, our God, what a joy it is to be in your presence and to know that you're here with us. We pray at this time, even as I lift your servant up to you, that you will cleanse my heart from every sin and every iniquity. May your Holy Spirit speak through my mouth. Lord, today as we come, we want to say thank you that you're an awesome God. You're a mighty God. You're a powerful God. You're a God who don't know what failure looks like. You are my God and our God, and you're Nathaniel's God. So right now, as we lift him up before your awesome presence, we pray in the mighty and in the powerful name of Jesus that, you know, you will step down right now beside his bed wherever he is. The enemy wanted to touch him, 
But God, this is your son. And you have not given the enemy power over him. So I pray at this time in the name of Jesus that you will defeat what the enemy is trying to do in terms of touching your son, of touching your health. And Lord Jesus, we call upon you, the great physician, the balm in Gilead. The Bible tells us when you walk the streets of the earth, this earth, many brought their sick to you. Some on beds, some walking, some leaping. But because of the love you have for your children, you granted them healing. And God, what we love about you is that when you heal, you don't do it in just one aspect of our lives. You do it holistically. So right now I pray that as you touch Nathaniel, my God, with your healing hand, you will energize his body with strength, whatever organism, whatever has his malfunctioning. You who made every cell and know how everyone works, Lord God, we pray right now that you will empower and enable each one of them to function the way you would have it done. Because when doctors and nurses and other professionals, Lord, when they do treatments, it is you who ultimately effect cure. So at this time, we leave your son in your hands confident that you will not allow the enemy to rejoice over him in this day. So we claim your promise in Jeremiah 17, 14, where you said, if I heal you, you will be healed. And if I save you, you will be saved. And you will be, I will be your praise. So God, with confidence, we leave him in your hands. We know you're going to allow him to rise up from his bed of affliction. We know you're going to let him come out of the hospital. We know you're going to give him a testimony to declare that there is no God like Jehovah. So with confidence, do in his life whatever you need to do so that his walk with you will be sweeter as the days go by. And he knows without um, any doubt that he serves a God who will neither fail him nor abandon him. So have your way and let your will be done in his life. And we thank you that you alone is God. There is none other. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. And we say, Amen. And just before we receive this word... Uh, my heart will be prepared um, by a meditation or by Sister Lois, who is coming to us at this time. Please allow your hearts to be ready to receive a word. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath. The song that I'll be singing is great, is Thy Faithfulness. And so I hope you are blessed by the words of the song. Faithfulness, great is. 
Great is thy faithfulness. Great. 
praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. It is an undeserved privilege to be here with you today. I want to thank Anel, and uh, I would like to commend her, commend her for all her work. Uh, I am one of the many chaplains of Snagd, and I am so privileged to be here. Pastor Colin Stewart, uh, my brother, my friend, um, receive my love, our love, my wife and I. It's a privilege to be in your pulpit. Thank you for having me. Media team, you know, you are in my heart. Thank you for the excellent work you're doing. And musicians, you just made my heart joyful today. And Lois, thank you so much for, for the singing. Most of all, I want to thank the Lord. He's good all the time. Let's pray. Father, it's your turn. I am a nobody. Make me that nobody that is being used by you, the somebody that needs to be heard by everybody in this room. Take over, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Here comes the story. Now, the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. You can find these words in the Gospel of Matthew, from verse 18, chapter 1. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man, and this is the word, that we will zoom in today, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. If you read the genealogy presented by Matthew in his gospel, you will find the pattern that is being destroyed by the way Joseph is introduced to us. Um, everybody is somebody's son. Abraham... Joseph, and so on. This particular Joseph is called the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born. And this is a strange way to put it, giving us a reason to look more into who Joseph is and what he does. You see, our nativity stories are based on the Gospel of Luke. Uh, Matthew puts Mary to the side, and focuses on Joseph. Let us take a look at Matthew's personal portrait of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born. Why would Matthew choose to begin his gospel this way? Uh, Matthew wants, us, wants to introduce us to the heart of the gospel that is to follow. Even before Jesus is born, Matthew anticipates the gospel which will follow. When we meet Joseph, he is betrothed to Mary or engaged. There were three steps of the marriage uh, during that time. Simple engagement, betrothal, and marriage itself. Betrothed was a very serious uh, matter. If you wanted to break up, 
you should have gone to a similar procedure as when you would divorce. And Matthew proceeds to tell us an incredible story because of who Joseph is and what he does. Joseph is a righteous man. Matthew chapter 1 verse 19. In New International Version we read that he was faithful to the law. Matthew is using here a technical term that is not an adjective, but is a noun. He, he uses the word dikaios, which is translation, is a translation of the Hebrew word tzaddik. Tzaddik. Joseph is a tzaddik. What is a tzaddik? A tzaddik is someone who studies and learns and observes the law of God, the Torah, the word of God that he is studying scrupulously, practicing it every day, and teaching others about it. Every morning a tzaddik would wake up with these words on his lips. Shema Israel Adonai Elohim Adonai Ehad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. If you were a tzaddik, you were as far as possible up the tree of respectability in the Jewish society that you could possibly be. There was nothing above that status. Well, there was. There were three other notches of respectability, but they were not accessible to everyone. You could have been a priest, but, uh, you know, uh, being a priest was not an option. Uh, you couldn't go to the seminary to be a priest. Um, you were a priest only and only if you were born in a certain tribe, the Levite. If you were a Levite, you couldn't be a real estate agent. You had to be a priest. You could have been a prophet, but uh, as you all know, prophets were selected, hand-picked by God himself. So if you were not a priest, a prophet, or the Messiah himself, the most advanced level you could get to was to be a tzaddik. I'd like to say that it's the equivalent of being an elder today, but it's not. Just follow me into the story of Joseph. A tzaddik innermost desire was to be true to the Lord God of Israel and to obey and live within the covenant that the Lord has made with his people, the Lord that has given them the Torah. And the Torah covers every area of life, every detail of life, uh, and because God is present in every detail of our life. For example, if you look at, uh, scan through the book of Leviticus, you will see that uh, everything is listed there, how to dress, clothes, sexual behavior, how to plow a field. Everything is in the Torah. A tzaddik was committed to do all of that, and he needed not only to know, but to do it. Joseph subscribed to the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. Oftentimes, we, we, we give them a hard time, forgetting that they were actually good people, pious people, and, and, and they wanted to be good. And they wanted to behave and obey the Torah. As a tzaddik, everybody in the village of Nazareth would look up at Joseph. And everybody in Nazareth would aspire to be a tzaddik. Because if you were a tzaddik, you had status. And when you have status, the natural tendency is to protect that status at all costs. That is our natural tendency. I am a pastor. I have to masters, I'm working on a PhD. How can I give that up? You're a tzaddik. 
living in the small village of Nazareth, a place where everybody knows everybody else's business. And you hear the devastating news. Mary's pregnant. Not so unusual in our culture and society these days, isn't it? What do you do? And you know that for a fact that you are not the father. What do you do? And here we are at the beginning of the gospel. A gospel which is going to re redefine what true righteousness is. And what being a tzaddik is all about. Joseph is a tzaddik committed to obeying the Torah, a Torah that covers every detail of life, and he discovers that his betrothed partner is pregnant. Does the Torah give any guidance in this matter? Is anything in the church manual that gives indications how one should act when such situation happens? Absolutely. For example, in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 21, then they shall bring the young woman out of the entrance of her father's house, and the men of her town shall stone her to death because she committed a disgraceful act in Israel by prostituting herself in her father's house. So you shall purge the evil from your midst. That is the maximum penalty, of course, but even the minimum would have had dire consequences for Mary. And Joseph doesn't even want to impose the minimum. What does it mean being a righteous man? Uh, because you see, this is how we would argue in our Sabbath school classes. We, all of us, amateur, myself included, theologians would say, um, Mary is pregnant and uh, he is not the father. A tzaddik would never marry a woman like this, would he? Or, Mary is pregnant, and he is the father. <laughs> then that means that he's not tzaddik at all. He can never win. He will never win. Marrying Mary is an absolutely crazy, brazen act. And to make matters worse, <laughs> Joseph follows the advice of the angel and he names Jesus that name. Uh, that is odd because in the Jewish culture is the mother that gives the name to the child, not the father. By doing so, Joseph adopts Jesus officially as his son. With this, his reputation as a tzaddik is dead and buried. I know that you know that Mary is pregnant. The gossips of the villagers will not believe that the Holy Spirit was actually the father. And they will never invite Joseph to serve in the synagogue ever again. He will never be asked to collect the offerings. He will never be asked to lead in the Sabbath school. Preaching, forget about it, is not even in question. You don't know how precious your reputation is until you lose it. And when you lose your name, you're a nobody. And Joseph had the rest of his life to reflect on that. He never regained his reputation. We don't know when he, were, he died. We don't know who preached at his burial, at his funeral. We know almost nothing about him. When Jesus visits the village uh, of his birth, and the story is found in Mark 6, the people would say, Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary? And brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon. And are not his sister here with us? Every Jewish man was named after his father. There was only one reason to call someone the son of his mother. 
you were illegitimate. Your mother is a sinner, and so is the tzaddik husband of hers. Jesus scandalized the respectable religious leaders of his time. In Matthew 9, we read the story that he sat at dinner in the house and many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. Have you wondered, why was Jesus so at home in the presence of sinners? Why he felt so comfortable um, in, in, in the presence of, of ladies of not so immaculate repute? And I wonder also why Jesus put it this way in Matthew 5, chapter, uh, chapter 5, verse 20. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Maybe because he had an example at home with Joseph, a man who one day decided to live the kind of righteousness that exceeds the righteousness of scribes and Pharisees. And maybe Jesus was so comfortable with those scandalous women who followed him because he had a memory of his father Joseph, who had surrounded his reputation for the sake of his mother Mary. When Joseph was a tzaddik, he believed that righteousness was defined in separating ourselves from sinners. His reputation depended on it. He believed the letter of the law as being holy and wonderful. I mean, how else you maintain standards, one would say. Until that fateful day when Joseph had the courage to embrace the kind of righteousness that exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. We believe that we are missing something, married or not, single or not. And we want to be made whole. We want to be reputable. We want to be respected. And oftentimes, we are willing to do anything to protect that reputation. Adopting Jesus in your life comes at a cost. And that cost is permanent. Adopting Jesus in your life comes with tremendous benefits. And they are eternal. Whether or not you are with someone, consider Joseph. There are many of us that think our lives would have been better off with or without someone. Because it's all about us. It's all about me and my reputation. What I would like to leave you with this morning, this afternoon. Adopt Jesus in your life, in your heart, in your mind. It's not easy and oftentimes it comes at a cost. We just came back from Romania and um, not today, <laughs> this week. And um, um, a colleague of mine, a friend, told me an incredible story. Well, in this day and age, incredible. Um, he told me about baptizing a young, a young lady. That she struggled with this because she was living with someone and they were not legally married, right? And my colleague, my friend, did something that I have to confess to you I am very reluctant and cautious to do. He told them and told her, if you want to be baptized, you have two options. Get married or leave him. Tough, isn't it? 
Who would do that in the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland or in the SEC, Pastor? There I say to anyone, to this wonderful lady that wants to be baptized, marry him or leave him. Adopting Jesus comes at a cost. And you are confused, isn't it? We can talk after. <laughs> we can definitely talk after. She left him because he didn't want to marry. Sad story, but happy story. I had a chat with her uh, on, on WhatsApp this week, and, and, and uh, she was telling me, oh, Pastor Mihai, because Michael is his name, she, she said, he, he's always telling me that, you know, I should come to the Sabbath school in the morning, and oftentimes I'm late because I work hard and I sleep. In, and he's telling you, to, telling you off? He said, yeah. Well, I'm not here to tell you off. I'm here to encourage you, to beg of you, to adopt Jesus in your life, no matter the cost. It's not free and it's not easy. Whoever comes here and says to you, oh, embrace Jesus, it's easy. No, it's not. But you can do it. Even it's not easy. You can do it. Embrace Jesus for your life. Adopt him in your mind and in your heart and in your soul. And your future is secured. And your eternity will be awesome. May God bless you and keep you. May you find the Mary, my dear Josephs in the room, that you will have the courage to say, marry me, being on your knee. And you ladies... May that Joseph, may you, you Marys in the room, may that Joseph find you. That Joseph that will be willing to surrender his reputation, his everything, his degrees, his ordinations, his everything for you and Jesus. It's not because of you. It's because of Jesus. And you'll be happy ever after. God bless you. of the service is the anointing service. So we'll just sing the song, Break Every Chain for a while. And you can join us as well.
break every chain, to break every chain, 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 break every chain. There is power, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Oh, to break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Break every chain. There is power. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's an army. There's an army rising up. See, there's an army. There's an army rising up. There is an army. There's an army rising up. To break Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place. He's not aware of it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. And now check this out. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. Crazy, isn't it? The oil, the olive oil that has been prepared for us represents the Holy Spirit. We know where it comes from. But it represents the Holy Spirit. And if you would like to make a special deal with the Holy Spirit this afternoon, please accept him and come to be anointed. Uh, Pastor Colin and those of you that were assigned, appointed to do this. Uh, this is what I would like to suggest. Let's make three lines. It's three of us, isn't it? Only two of us, Pastor? Hmm?
Okay? Any ordained elders in the room? Then you will have to bear with myself and Pastor Stewart. Um, let me tell you a story before we begin. I was in Zambia a few years ago with a number of colleagues from the SEC, Pastor Andrew Davis, those of you who met him, was with me there. And um, I was visiting the slum where I was preaching. <clears throat> Everybody was asking for prayers, for deliverance. And uh, I asked the elders, what about doing an anointing service on a Friday night? I said, Pastor, we don't do this here. We anoint people only when they're about to die. We, we anoint them for burial, like Mary anointed Jesus' feet. I said, let's see how it goes. I prepared six elders and myself, bought the jars, bought the oil, and uh, I explained to the audience what was this about. And I said, let the elders do it. I'm going to be here uh, as a substitute, as they say in football. To my amazement, there were seven lines formed in front of us. And for the last few, I had to sit because I was... I couldn't sit, be on my feet. And I'm going to tell you only one story. I have many. So this teenager comes, and I will always ask her, what would you like me to pray for? Is there anything in particular you want me to pray for? And uh, it, imagine, seven cues yeah, in a slam outdoors. You know, I had to get very close to her to hear. She said, pray for my health. I said, okay, I'm happy to pray for, for your health. Can you be more specific? And she said, yeah, pray for my... I said, so, say that again, please. She said, pray for my eye. Because the doctor said that I'm going to be blind in a couple of months. And then I asked the Lord, who are you, Pastor Vili? Who are you to anoint this teenager and ask the Holy Spirit to restore the sight of this young lady? You are a nobody, and I am a nobody. But that teenager came with faith. So if you would like to be anointed today, three of us. Thank you. You know what to do and how to do it. I'm not going to give you instructions. Because you're a lady, you're going to be here in the front. Another line here for myself. Another one for Pastor Colin Stewart right there. If you would like to come, come. Have you seen how this happens before? Pastor, please anoint this wonderful lady so people can see it. Here they are. Yeah? If, you ha if you've never seen how anointing takes place, Pastor... Colin Stewart will anoint his first elder. It's a symbol, but there is power in this symbol. And Pastor Colin is praying for this wonderful lady. And her heart's desires will be answered by the Lord. Okay, are you ready? I'm going to leave the microphone to the, these wonderful singers so they can continue singing as you all come to be anointed. Break every chain. Break 
There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. There is power.
is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. Mighty, mighty power. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. Your mercy towards me, your love and kindness towards me, your tender mercies I see day after. 
better day. You're always providing for me. Great is your mercy to see. Great is your me. 
kindness. Your loving kindness towards me. Your tender mercies, I see. Your tender mercies, I see. Day after day, day after day.
Um, Pastor Vili, just one second. So, uh, we've been told uh, for our online audience, many are watching, and a number want to be <laughs> anointed. So, Pastor, is there anything that we can do in a situation like that? Pastor, you decide if it's Central London or Wimbledon so we can organize it. <laughs> we want to thank you for being with us. And... Uh, what can we do, Pastor? Hmm? What we can do for you is to pray for you in a special way, and then Sister Brenda will do a prayer, a song, and a benediction. And um, Pastor, you pray. Okay, so all of those that are watching online, obviously you're not physically here. We understand that. 
we also believe that the Holy Spirit is here and also there with you. And so we're going to make a special prayer for all of our online viewers that the Holy Spirit, that the power of God, that the life-changing effects of Jesus will fall upon you as well. So please, congregation, can we bow our heads as we pray for those online. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, what a powerful and a mighty God we serve. It's amazing that you have chosen us. You didn't only choose us, but you chose the many, many individuals watching online. Some may be watching for the first time, but somehow they have contacted us here asking to be included in the anointing service. And so today, here in central London, but under the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray a prayer for every single individual. Don't know what the concerns may be. Don't know what is troubling them. But Father, we know that if we're in this world, this world of sin, then all of us need to be anointed. And so whatever that particular concern is, we pray now that the Holy Spirit power will fall upon them, upon all of us, that the anointing power of Jesus will transform lives so that those watching online will know in a real way that God is right beside them too. To give them the victory. To give them that overcoming power. So Lord, thank you for all of those watching online. And may Lord, your Holy Spirit power touch them not just for today, but for the rest of their lives. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand, please. Thank you. This has been an awesome Sabbath. It's a Sabbath of an unplanned fasting. And the anointing, the anointing. I don't know if you could feel the presence of, your, of the Holy Spirit. That's why I said to you all, when you're anointed, just sit quietly and savor the presence of the Lord. Father in heaven, we are so blessed. We are so grateful. We just want to praise you. We just want to thank you because you're the anointed one. And you've left an example for us what to do. This anointing service, Lord, we know it's not in the oil. There's no miracle in the oil, but by faith, the oil was prayed over. And everyone that came forward, Lord, and even those as the pastor prayed for those online who would have loved to be here. Father, our faith, because of our faith, we've been healed. Because of our faith, Lord, the things we have wanted, the sins that we have confessed, it has been granted by you. We thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your ministering angels. We thank you for the message. We just want to glorify, magnify, and give you all the praise. And may this be a memorial day for each one of us on the 21st of August, 2021. We just magnify you. It's recorded in the heavenly book. Lord, may our lives never be the same. Keep us focused. Keep us faithful. Bless the choir. Bless everyone here, the pastors, the elders, the deacons. We just want to say, we just stop by here to meet with you, Lord, and to say thank you. Thank you, God. You're awesome and worthy to be praised. Thank you for the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let the church say amen. Please be seated. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church to him who can keep you on your feet standing tall in his bright presence fresh and celebrating to our one God our only Savior through Jesus Christ our master be glory majesty strength and rule before all time and now and to the end of all time amen about to go for the second part of our service. Uh, we, there is a team downstairs. Yeah? Pray for them as well. <laughs> they have been working relentlessly to provide a lunch um, that's going to be served in room number one. 
and the directions will be, we're going to go through this door, no, through that door, and then we're going to come back, grab the food over there, and then we come back to the main auditorium for the second part of the, the program. Have you been blessed today? Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Adi, do you, do you want to come and let's pray together for the... For the Almighty God, we just thank you so much for providing food. We thank you for upholding us for all that you've done. We just ask in the name of Jesus that even as you've blessed the service, you will bless the food. Help us to quickly get through and come back. May there be no food poisoning, no bad feeling, just joy and life. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. Amen. Amen.